What's up everybody? Hey, it's Flip Masters back with another Flip Masters production. Guys, I'm starting my vlog out. It's been crazy busy. I've been, you can see I've been working like non-stop trying to get things done. So today I'm going to bring you something special. Um, Nomi and I looked everywhere online trying to find, you know, a special, believe it or not, a toilet. <laughs> for our bathroom build. So uh, you can check out the bathroom build right here. As you can see, we really kind of went in a different style of an older kind of antique style. Everything is very modern, but uh, that's where we want to go with that. So what we decided to do is go with a high back toilet instead of getting a regular, just consumer style brand toilet. So uh, we checked everywhere, looked online, and the cheapest we could find was like $699, and I think that was the kit to actually do it and build it uh, yourself. We wanna try to see if we can DIY this. That's right, we're gonna DIY a high back toilet. Okay, so as you can imagine, You've probably looked online if you're watching this video and you haven't found anything either. Well, we looked everywhere trying to find a DIY toilet. So we wanted something that looked like this. That's gonna actually work really good in our particular build. So as you can see, the spot is perfect for it. Now, if you look back at my construction, sorry, there's gonna be an echo in here. There's nothing to stop the uh, echo, weird sound. But if you go look back at my uh, picture here, which I'll show you here real quick, I actually framed in some pieces up here so I could actually mount my high back toilet in the future. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with some L brackets uh, to mount the high back but we need to go ahead and get the bowl mounted. Now the cool part about this bowl is we actually picked up a, uh, a Mancesta by Mansfield up at a uh, thrift store for only 15 bucks. Now we bought it with a tank, but unfortunately the tank was no good. So we had to let it go and um, bought another tank, which you can buy another tank at uh, Home Depot for $34 and this tank works perfect because it actually has the two inch uh, screw mount at the bottom that you can actually thread in your adapter you're gonna use later. This particular toilet actually has a small uh, one and a quarter inch hole and two bolt mounts. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna frame in a piece of wood on the top of that, it's gonna actually press down on a cup link and put it up underneath there and that'll hold the foam and everything in place to keep it sealed while we're getting ready to go. Okay, so these are a few of the things that you'll actually be using out when you start doing your build. Now, most of this stuff has been uh, from Home Depot and uh, some of it has actually been from thrift stores, liquidation places and stuff like that. Uh, obviously the tools and stuff that I had. So obviously I need a flange uh, to put down the toilet. And then uh, of course you can use whatever you prefer to use uh, to set your toilet down. You can use a, uh, a fluid master, which is basically a silicone base, which no wax, no mess. A standard wax or an extra thick wax, depending on your choice on how you like to set your toilets up. Uh, obviously you need PVC glue and uh, using the PVC fittings and along with a piece of PVC pipe that you can see right here, uh, the, that's going to be a part of the toilet, that's actually going to be the main drain pipe. Uh, so you don't see a piece of copper, I do have a piece of copper which you'll see later on in the video. Um, it is a half inch thick piece of copper and that's going to be our water line in. And what we're going to do is what I chose to do is actually sweat them in using these really awesome female sweat adapters. So we're going to sweat these adapters to our pecs and then uh, we'll use these, I'll explain later, along with uh, those cans of spray paint right over here. And uh, we're going to paint these and these will actually use what holds it on the floor, you won't be able to see it. So these were 61 cents at Home Depot, so pretty nice. These are our brackets that we're going to use to hold the tank in and we'll show you more than that. 
Uh, we're going to pull chain. This is going to be our pull chain to pull it down. So we decided to use one from an old fan. Looked really nice. Uh, obviously, standard hole saws, things like that, that you're going to build for the wood cabinet that you're going to build around your toilet bowl, hang, uh, excuse me, the um, tank that's hanging on the wall. Uh, sorted tools, drills, and of course, caulking. Most of the things you see here are just based off of the, the main bowl itself. Uh, this piece here is going to be the water line. Uh, we need obviously PEX cutters, uh, half inch crimps, along with crimps to go around the uh, 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 PEX adapters and uh, pencils to mark your stuff and of course a recip to cut your uh, PVC unless you have a PVC cutter which I do but I don't have it with me right now so we're going with that <laughs> alright so uh, level to get your stuff level make sure you're in a good spot and uh, that should be about it uh, my bowl uh, didn't come with tank bolts so I went ahead and got some tank bolts as well so we're going to get started use some of these uh, equipment and tools and uh, we'll try to show you all step by step the best way we can okay okay so now I have the water shut off so I know I'm good to go so you know I can cut the line but before I do that I have to go ahead and get the tank mounted to the wall that way we know exactly how far we have to go from the floor to the tank so we're going to mount with these two brackets and then at the very top, we'll put some clips that actually clip it to the very top. And I'm sitting right about here is my wall stud, the one that I want to use for the main bar. And right about here is the other stud that I'll put in there. This should allow me to mount this on here and get a good solid thing. The nice thing about it with the tank and this here, we're actually going to use these holes right here to put the bolt through that's actually connected to the tank. So that'll actually hold it in place. Little quick tip makes it faster. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get our tank open. Now this is the tank that uh, I bought from Home Depot. It's a 1.28 gallon per flush. It's uh, $34. I believe what it is. Now we're going to utilize some of the stuff in this tank, which is really nice. So it, the pad right here, the foam that goes down up underneath, we're going to use that again. And we can also use the little stoppers that come with it. The tank actually comes with everything that you need, so it's kind of nice. Now judging from what I'm looking at, I'm going to have to drill out this hole or ream out this hole. So let's go ahead and Pull this kit out, we're going to mount the tank onto the screws and stuff, and then we'll see how much I have to move it out. I want to go ahead and tighten these down thoroughly. We want them good and tight so we don't have any problems with uh, leaking or water leaking out. So remember that. Now, something I didn't I didn't think about that I'm looking at right now is I don't see the wing nuts that go up underneath here. So we're gonna to have to get some wing nuts or some more nuts to, and washers to put on the backhand side. Okay, so we know this is gonna mount really good, so we'll see, I'm gonna do a little test bit real quick. Oh yeah, my own money. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda of set them in there. All right, so we get a kind of an idea of about how far it's gonna be. All right, let's get a measurement so we know exactly where to place these. All right, so on center, we got five and a half inches. Okay, we know that our mark is right here. Since we pre-marked it, we got five and a half, right? Five and a half. Sorry about that. My camera uh, battery actually died, so you didn't get to see the mount. But, uh, I'll tell you what I did. Um, I went ahead and put a screw here, uh, went off the side of the stud, so I went ahead and moved to the right just a little bit, and I was good to go. Uh, this one is on the stud. This one is on the little piece that I put in between the two studs. So I only got one screw in here and three screws in here. So it should be pretty good to go. And I mounted from the middle hole, giving me just a little bit, putting the base at around five foot so that's the plans. And it's lined up right now at five and a half inches. Let's just 
verify. It's a little bit more than I like, but we can always bend it a little bit. There we go. Oh yeah. So we'll go ahead and get the tank put up here and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so the part that you didn't see was me tightening down the bolt right here and then testing the flapper to make sure the flapper was going to open correctly. Because once it's in there, I got to get a ladder to mess with it. So, all right, here we go. Let's get it up in there. All right, you see the brackets hold it really good. Now these are some pretty sturdy brackets. Now you can buy uh, sturdier ones if you want to. But personally, I think these work just fine. So uh, just go and put your dollar in there. The water in here is gonna make it heavier. Remember a gallon weighs like eight point something pounds. So we want to make sure that these brackets are gonna hold pretty good. Now these are pretty heavy due to brackets but the box itself will actually sit right here with a little block on the inside of it and that'll hold everything in place so that you won't have any problems and you're good to go. So we know we're going to put this right to the floor. So let's go right here. I'm going to find out exactly how tall we're going to be here. We're going to go ahead and mount and sweat on the adapters for the bottom so we can go ahead and cut this and put it in there. <laughs> you like my remote control? Okay, so after carefully measuring it out and realizing I screwed up on the other one pretty bad, I could put a join in it and make it a little longer if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that. I've decided to go with this one and put just one little bend in it. So when we go from seven inches to three inches, so I want to just slowly, gradually make it go up to three inches. So it's going to be seven, it's going to cut back a little bit. And that's about it. I'm going to come up and I'll bend it just a little bit. There we go. Bend it back. Right, a little too much bend, no problem. Just go back the other way with it. Copper's super, super soft. So you gotta be real careful not to snap it. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, that's perfect. So I only need to cut it down just a little bit and it'll fit exactly where I want it to fit. I want it to come into right about here, which is probably about five, six inches from the base. That way when I put my clip on, I'll be able to hook the joint in and then swirl it around inside of there. Because the box is gonna come to right about here. So that should be perfect. Let's get this bowl put in. There we go. All right, let's go get the bowl and set the bowl. And that's it. That's the other thing, when you're setting your hole here, I had to pre-think how I was gonna do this. So I lined the hole up. If you look, it's right even with it. That way when I put my pipe down here, won't be crooked or off or something like that. But you can turn it a little bit if you need to. Of course, you don't want it looking too weird. All right, so if I need to adjust that or something, I actually can do that right now. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually cutting out the back of the toilet piece. Now I'm using a hard piece of wood. Uh, it's just a regular, it's just a one by eight. And uh, I'm just gonna cut the little piece out that I need. And of course, I've got to uh, make the center hole right in the dead center, which it shouldn't be a problem. But I'll do this later after I have it sitting over the top of the uh, back of the toilet. That way I know exactly where my hole's gonna be. So I'll cut this out really quick. We'll smooth those edges out. We'll some sandpaper or whatever. Let's do a test fit real quick. All right, let's go. Yep, that looks perfect. 
right around the edges there, and then what we'll do is we'll stain that and get it all looking really good. There it is. So we know that the PVC fits, and as long as the bushing uh, doesn't go through, we're good. So we we're going to use a cup link and we're going to cut it in half, but then I found the, an actual bushing. What I like about the bushing is it has the angle that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the bushing right underneath. As you can see, it just barely kind of fits through there. And uh, this will actually be glued with really strong, heavy duty uh, PVC glue on the bottom. And this will actually press down into the cup that's at the bottom into that uh, rubber seal or that uh, foam seal along with the screws that's going to come at the bottom to hold this in place and that'll press down on it and that'll hold all of the water attachments together so that's how we're going to do that okay so this is one of the parts that actually gets screwed onto the bottom of the bowl here so we're going to screw that up real, real fast now what we do is we painted it kind of a copper color uh, so that way it matches the copper base. And tighten that down. All right, that's pretty tight. Uh, I'm gonna hand tighten it right now because we're gonna get some measurements from it to the top of the bowl here. Uh, we gotta get, find out exactly how much we're gonna need here. So let's, let's see if we can get that on the camera real quick. 49 and a half will do it. Okay, so I went ahead and got the piece cut and uh, we're using a bushing at the very bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of stick this. I'm just test fitting this right now. I wanna make sure that we're good to go. I went ahead and cut it at 49 and three quarters. I just wanna make sure it's good. Oh yeah, so I did 49 and three quarters and I'm kind of happy I did because it puts a little pressure and everything on it. So that's cool. So what we're going to do is we'll, I'll loosen up the screws right here on the bottom and when we get ready to set this, I'll set the tank on there after I paint it. Of course, this side here will be primed, it'll be opened up. Okay, so there's the piece of wood right there. This will actually go around and it'll sit on the bottom of the tank and this will go up inside. And what that wood does is it actually pushes down on that bushing like this to help seal that in just a little bit. And then the way you do that is you just, uh, the existing holes right here, you just get some uh, lag bolts, you know, probably about an inch, inch and a, uh, inch and a quarter, and put a washer around it and put it up underneath and you lag it from the bottom of the wood. That's why you wanted a good hard wood for that. So we'll get this painted real quick and uh, get it set. And uh, what I'm probably gonna do is do some type of decorative cap over the top of it. Um, there, I, I might even buy another bushing and just route around it so it slides down over the top because it actually looks kind of nice. Put them together like that and then uh, clamp them on either side. Yeah, I like that, so we'll do that too. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the toilet seat on. Uh, that way I can get an idea of what color we're gonna stain this little bad boy. Plus I still have to route around it. Um, obviously I'm not showing some steps like uh, cutting the PVC, that's not necessary. You know how to cut a piece of PVC. But uh, I'm routing it, you don't have to see that, I'm staining it, you get the idea. Uh, the, what I will show is um, just mounting it and getting it all set and everything and then building the box over the top of it. Once we get it mounted right here and the water line run up, we'll do some tests to make sure that we're good and we're getting a proper flush. And then once we know we're good, no water leaks, then we'll go ahead and move forward with the box building or anything. But I have a good feeling it's gonna work out pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and put the toilet seat on so we can get an idea. So let me grab it. Okay, so this toilet seat we couldn't find here. And this is an elongated toilet seat with a soft close. If you're familiar with that, it's where if you let the toilet seat drop, it just doesn't slam, it just slowly takes itself down. I recommend those are fun. So I found this Angel Shield one on uh, Amazon and we ordered it, so y'all will be the first ones to get to see what it looks like. <laughs> That's a very nice See, Look at that, look at that color. Nice dark wood, and it comes with a little pad and 
some other stuff for it. I think that's to protect the seat, which is cool. Nice. All right, so let's get that put out. We'll go ahead and put the in. And then just at the bottom, we'll go ahead and just tighten them up. All right. I do believe we are locked in. Locked and loaded. I highly recommend, especially when you've got a heavy wood one like this, and you need a soft close on it, it makes such a difference. Toilet seat done, and now we can match the wood. We got to rub the edges so it matches, but it'll look really good on the back of the toilet, and then that's where the wood piece goes. Okay, so next step is these. We're gonna go ahead and take these. Uh, these are PVC. Uh, ever built half inch. Now, the reason why it happens is because the copper line is going to go through them. And we're going to go ahead and paint these real quick. So uh, I'll paint them and then you'll get to see them in just a few seconds. Ready? Now, I've made the copper piece and I've added the uh, piece on the bottom, raised it, raised it on the top, and added the piece on the top. We're going to go ahead and get this part put in first. Now, I'm going to have to crimp this in place. Uh, using uh, PEX, you know, I'm using a half inch PEX connection, that's what that piece right there is, and we'll connect that PEX right onto the bottom, and this will be the piece that actually sits into the floor. Now I have that over here, um, you're not going to be able to really see that piece getting connected, but uh, you'll be able to see what the top piece looks like. So let me go ahead and get this piece connected, and then um, I'll show you what the top piece looks like. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like, or it's what it's gonna look like. So it worked pretty good. As you can see, that's how the connection is. And then the piece just sits right on the floor. So what I'm gonna do is I went ahead and got the uh, valve already done. I have a piece of PEX on one side, a little wing and a PEX piece on the other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on top and I'll show you how that's done. Super easy. Just Clip it on top and slide it around. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my guide. I want my valve like this, facing this way. Take my gripper, go ahead and clip that on. Now this is the hardest part is this this thing shaking and I'm shaking. It's just an entertaining freaking thing that happens here. on. Now we'll go ahead and just do a quick check. Right, good. Okay. Now that piece is on. And that piece is going to sit right up underneath. So it's going to go down a little bit under the floor. Now we're going to put our valve on and our valve will actually go in. So um, one thing I like to do is leave the caps on these so that way they're protected. And it's good. This piece here actually is going to go another place in case you need to use a different connection. And we'll get that piece out of the way and we'll go ahead and put our hose on. Okay, so one of the things I discovered whenever I was trying to do the chain is um, we need some type of counterbalance for it. So what I did was just create myself, sorry, I got fuzzy here, a little counterbalance. Now what this is is just a little socket with a stainless steel bolt on it and just a little brass wire. And this hangs in on that flapper on the end of it. So with the weight of my um, the focus, there we go. With the weight of my little crystal here hanging off the bottom, it uh, counteracts the weight and that way it'll work. So you'll see how it's done in just a second. So when you put these things on, you want a little bead and basically we drill the hole We run the little bead up on there. So this little clip thing has two little hooks on it. 
It's just like a little clip that goes over the edge. And that's locked in. Now, uh, we did a counterweight on the inside and it's like that little DIY. All right, so there's the little counterweight right there. Sorry, my camera doesn't want to get all the way up. So the counterweight is there to allow the flapper to close back up. And that's it. That's all it's for purpose is. Okay, so as you can see, we got a um, 12 inch line. And the reason why I use a 12 inch is because I want it as close as I can get. And if I ever need to adjust down or up or whatever for the box, that's kind of how I do it. Went ahead and got the chain installed, uh, which you saw just a few seconds ago, and kind of a few bounce around thing. The uh, copper line looks good, it's connected. Let me grab the camera real quick. Okay, so you can see the pull chain, the copper line, and it goes down right to there. And that's where it's connected. And what I'm using is regular screws with some washers to mount into that. Now that has to slide on here to this piece first. Then um, it gets put down and then clipped. And then that piece gets put inside. So we're at that step. We're going to go ahead and get that part done. And uh, that's the main connection to get everything set. So this is going to be quite interesting to get it finished. Okay guys, so we have finally finished all of the construction and the work. Um, if you look over here, you probably noticed that uh, from the original when I started, that the um, down pipe is actually different. So what I discovered was the inch and a half literally makes like a tidal wave inside of the toilet. So I switched to an inch and changed it to a nice brass color. I'll uh, zoom in in just a few minutes. But I was able to get everything all figured out and fixed. It's functioning just like it's supposed to. Something else that happened was right here in the connection piece, the weight of the toilet pushed down on the pipe actually caused a leak. So uh, what I did was I went back in and I got a new rubber gasket over the top and then I sealed it underneath with silicone top and bottom and I just filled it. I filled it full of silicone. So the silicone and then I siliconed the nut itself and the top where it threads into the two inch. So I siliconed the crud out of it. So that's something you might have to do as well. Uh, but once I siliconed it, no more leak problems. It's good to go. Now that might just been a manufacturing problem with my particular tank because it was a cheap tank. Uh, the entire project from top to bottom, I think, cost me about a hundred bucks. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and flush it here and let you check it out. So here, you can hear it. Perfect flush every time, no problems. But the it, one inch was the trick and that's going to work. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a little close up so you can take a look. And uh, pretty much most of the same build is the exact same. I just switched to a smaller pipe. But it works just fine, as you can see. And uh, we're going to build the box next and get it all set up in there. So uh, let me show you up real close. Okay, so uh, I just wanted y'all to see the start of the frame for the box. And you can see I had to cut and put them in and then the chain just pulls right through. So uh, that's where it's at. So you can put a little rivet right there if you want to just to make it look good. But uh, yeah, that's just the initial box design. Uh, it'll be stained in dark, it'll match the lid and everything. But uh, there's the base. Okay, so uh, now that I'm done with the toilet and getting it all set up and everything, uh, so what I did is I cut the boards that I needed and um, I took uh, an ebony wash 
or an ebony stain by Minwax. And I stained up some boards and everything and got them set up. Cut, and uh, this is gonna be the box. Okay, so this is the top of the box and everything that's uh, set up with it. Uh, the bottom of the box is already installed, um, but uh, we're gonna mount this right on top and then we're gonna screw it to the wall. That way it doesn't really put weight onto the box. But uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put this together real quick and uh, that'll be the end of it. Now I pretty much simplified this. I didn't want it to be anything ridiculous or anything. It didn't need to be anything wild. This is just going to sit on top. It's just mainly for decoration, and that's it. So, you ain't got to go crazy with it. And honestly, you don't have to go crazy with the wood glue either. And then we're we'll tack it in place. Now, this would help if I had some clamps to clamp this down, but unfortunately, I don't. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to use this wooden peg that came with this table and I'm going to stick it right there and just slide that right against it. And that'll hold it in place while I do this tag. Uh, the nails that I have in here are uh, one and a quarter. I've got two inch nails as well. I think these are the two inch nails. Perfect. I lined up really good. I'm sure it was like a lot easier approach to do this than what I'm doing, but it's DIY. We're not supposed to be professional construction guys. We're supposed to just do it ourselves at home, right? Like I said, it's just gonna sit up on top anyway, so it's nothing to be freaky about or worried about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna determine which side I think looks the best. I'm liking this side, so this is gonna be our front face right here. Okay, now that we got the box kind of partially the way we want it, we found a good place to set it. We'll go ahead and get these pieces over here and get this all set and everything, so it should be good. Alright, so we need to put a bit. So just a little bit of work. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the this side. Now, I'm sure if I clamped this it would work better, but unfortunately I don't, uh, I don't have my clamps, I can't find them, don't know where they're at, I give up. <laughs> Just a little hangover, that's why I went ahead and put the middle in first, just to make sure. Perfect. Good and bust a single one through. So that was nice. Alright, now this one's kind of interesting. The way this one goes here in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little glue on the sides here. And then I'm going to just tack it just a little bit here on the side. Um, I believe the, the nail actually will go in to right here. It's a two inch nail. I just need it to hold it just a little bit because I'm gonna attack it from the bottom on the other side. But I just wanna make sure it's gonna be in place and everything, so. chose this direction because this particular one, it looks so good, uh, this direction. All right, so I believe that uh, we can take this and it should kind of hold it. Mm -hmm. 
just barely went in, and that's what I wanted it to do, just, just to hold it in place. Perfect. Now I'm sure all the woodworking people out there are looking at your, me going, what the hell are you doing? And I'm okay with that, because this is DIY, and I don't do this for a living. And it don't have to be perfect, it just has to feel like it is. All right, so we'll stand it up real quick. So you can get an idea what the box looks like. The nice thing is, is uh, you won't even see the top because they're gonna have a little decoration. And I do have a couple little trim pieces. I might actually stick one on the front here, one on the bottom. So now that we got that, we can go ahead and test fit our drawer. Make sure it fits good. I'm gonna open mine this direction. Oh yeah, like a glove. So let's go ahead and turn that so you can, you can see it. As you can see, it fits really nice. Um, and then of course the hinges will be on the outside. And you can see the little hinges, kind of a dark color. I know it's a little fuzzy, but we'll go ahead and get these hinges put on here. So while I'm doing this, I gotta go and grab some screws for the actual door itself. So. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-drill this just a tiny bit. Well, again, someone's probably looking at me going, what are you doing? set up and let you take a look and then of course we have to uh, do the hardware too. So there she is and then the hardware set. Door opens and closes and it pops back this nice little hinge for that reason right there. Nice and closed and uh, there we go. There's the box for the uh, top of the toilet and then of course we're going to put some decorative molding and some other stuff around it so it should look really pretty when it's all done. Um, simple box, nothing crazy. There you go. Okay, so we're ready now uh, to go ahead and mount the box. I got everything kind of set in here the best it's going to be. And uh, let's see if it looks right. It's going to be a little tall, I kind of know that. Uh, but uh, Noah's going to go ahead and jump in and do some decoration and everything on it. It'll actually make it look a little bit better in the future. Right now it's a little tall, but once I get it set, then I can realign the door and get everything set up on it, right? All right, so let's get it put up there. All right. Let's see. Put that right there. All right, I kind of get up. I've got two little brackets up here. And these brackets are set in here. Let that connect right. Okay. I just want to get it tacked in place and we can readjust later. Alright, so let's get this part tacked here. Kind of a tight fit in there, so. Now I'm going to get this side aligned a little bit more so it's straighter right here. One more in the middle. And I'll swing this side in. Well, some screws we gotta put the top. I gotta repair this one side piece right here because the nail, the finishing nail shut the nail out the side. Sometimes that does happen, it's kind of annoying. That's basically it right there though. Uh, pretty much set on it, it looks really good. Few little tweaks to make it straight and we'll be good to go. So let me finish that up and then uh, we'll show y'all an overall setting of everything and how it looks. So be done here in just a second and you can see the whole thing. So I wanted to show you the complete DIY high tank toilet. So that way you can see where it is. So let me stand back and let you take a look. So here's the box, as you saw. We got a little trim on the sides and stuff to make it look good. I've uh, still got some glue drying in here, so it's going to take a little bit. But uh, you open it up, 
You see I got full access to all of the parts and everything that's inside of it. You know, the way the tube and everything looks. I'm um, really happy with how it turned out. It turned out to be good. Uh, pretty simple how it's done. Um, this is the box. It's simple. And uh, let me get you a little close up here. Okay, I'm pretty proud of this uh, DIY toilet build, and I uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, keep up with the channel, you know, hit the thumbs up if you think, subscribe if you like it, typical YouTube stuff, and uh, hopefully we'll be some more DIYs coming to you soon. Alright guys, we'll see y'all.